I want to talk about uh, another subject, Ginger, which is like one of my favorite topics because it's very close to my heart. Yes. Um, you're very open about your sobriety. Yes. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm also sober. <gasps> So, I did not know that. Wait, yes. I did. I reached out to you at the very beginning. I probably had five followers. I'm like, hey, me too. Oh, did I respond? Probably not, but you were probably like, who is this girl? I, I also don't ever, I have to admit, I delete, I never look at my Instagram. Yeah, videos. no, it's okay. Tell but, me more. That's exciting. Congrats to you. Well, everybody knows my story um, and we're here to hear your story, but I will say, so I was a raging alcoholic for years. All It started in high school, got really bad in college. Um, I got sober at 28. I was sober for seven years. Okay. Um, and then I relapsed and then I spent four and a half years trying to get sober and I will now have four years on July 6th, July 6th. God willing. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, it's a big part of my life, big part of my identity. Yes. It's what saved me. It's what made me who I am. Um, and I'm actually incredibly grateful for all of those like excruciating experiences. So tell me about your story. I would love to. Um, so I am 52 now, and this September 8th, I will have 19 years um, clean and sober, and it was quite the journey. Um, I was a partier in high school, a fun time partier. I never knew until college that not everyone blacks out <laughs> like me, yeah. and I ended up going to rehab in, for the first time in 1993 for alcohol. Up until then, so I dated this guy. You'll appreciate this. I dated this guy for 10 years, and in 1989, his dad, who was sober, said, hey, I go to these meetings. Would you like to come with me? And people like us are always down to do anything. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll go to your meeting. So he took me to an AA meeting. Didn't say, like, you need it. But I went, and he said, what did you think? And I said, that was so cool. If I ever meet anyone who needs that kind of help, I'm going to send them to you. <laughs> and he planted the seed. And so to Jim T from Pittsburgh, I am incredibly grateful to you forever. Uh, from there, when I went to treatment um, for alcohol, I didn't know I couldn't take Xanax and that I couldn't take pain pills and smoke weed. Nobody told me that or do a couple lines of Coke. Just real quick aside, because you just reminded me that the first time I went to rehab, my mom tried to mail me Xanax because she didn't realize <laughs> right. that I couldn't take it and she thought I needed it to help oh, me sleep. Of course. Yeah. She yeah. honestly like thought it was helpful because my parents had – no one in my family has ever gotten sober but me. Mm. So my parents had no idea – how to deal with it, but I had forgotten about that till you said that. So, anyway, which one of your parents is the alcoholic or addict? Um, my father. Okay, my father is too, and my dad was a. My dad is Italian from Brooklyn. He's a raging Guido. He's seventy. How old is he? Seventy nine. He turns eighty. This he year. turns eighty this year, and he was a wild. Think Ray Liotta, R.I.P. Ray, um, Italian cocaine. Uh, dealer, user. There was Coke everywhere for me growing up. And I swore I'd never be like my dad. That's what I always said. And um, lots of rehab stints, <laughs> lots of rehab stints actually. And it just got worse and worse. And I suffer from something called endometriosis. I had the highest stage of it where I was having surgeries constantly to try to fix this. And I was given a Percocet at the time. And I was like, oh, where have you been my whole life? Mm -hmm. Like, this was it. And it was, if you've seen the TV series, um, which one, what was the most recent one called where they took down Purdue Pharma for the OxyContin? Oh, yes. Um, I was addicted to OxyContin during all of that because the doctor said you can't get addicted. The farm reps told us that you can take these for pain. You'll never have a problem. Dope sick. Dope sick was the name of the show. I was so strung out. I was so sick. And my dad ended up getting sober to help me. He's been sober ever since. Wow. Yeah. And it was a long road of that. I had been to multiple treatment centers. Um, I tried to end my life because I couldn't stop using. And the last place I went, I will plug, um, I went to Silver Hill Hospital. It's right outside Greenwich, Connecticut. And they were able to treat my depression and my um, addiction and alcoholism. And I've been sober ever since. I'm extremely involved in the community that supports um, different ways to um, maintain sobriety. I'm trying to be uh, sensitive to 
the unspoken rules of that. Um, we don't talk about it publicly, but there are multiple ways of maintaining sobriety. And it's been, you know, at first it was hard, but my child knew me using and she was six or seven when I got clean and um, she doesn't, she doesn't remember it. Thank God for any parent that's worried that they have destroyed their child's life. Tell the story about when you were trying to make amends with me. Yeah. I had a really rough time thinking, my gosh, she's never going to forgive me. And I was picking her up at summer camp and I was all ready for it. And I said, listen, I was a terrible mom for the first few years of your life. And I wasn't there. Um, I did some horrible things and I am so sorry. And I want to make an amends to you. And, um, I can tell you a day at a time, it won't happen again. And she goes, okay, mom, cool. Can we go to Dairy Queen? <laughs> <laughs> and it just shows me how much, for me at least, it was so much bigger to me because all I wanted was to be a good mom. And yeah. somebody said to me, and I passed this on to women that I help, they said, are you done robbing your kid of the childhood she deserves? And that moment, that phrase yeah. still kills me to today. And I have made a commitment on a daily basis not to um, drink or use drugs in any form to be the best um, be person. Be the best you, you can be. Yeah, I say that every day. Be the me best mom, person, friend I can be. And I fall short with my isms, but not with the um, the using. And, you know, life's tough and yeah. it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be on this path with you. Yeah. So if you ever want to chat, you know, sobriety and stuff. Isn't it amazing though, like how the hardest thing, like for me, when I came out of it, I just thought, man, if I can do this, I can do anything. And anything. it, and it anything. gave me, I think, a sense of confidence. Um, yeah. And also like a kind of like weird faith. I'm not religious or any way, but that like I could like whatever it was, I could get through it. Yes. You know? Yes. And to take that even a step further, um, we can get through anything, but it has also, I don't know if you can relate given me this unfortunate, not a numbness, but an apathy or there's no time to get too stressed out about things. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't let things bother me as much or fall apart as much. You know, I mentioned my mom is very ill with cancer and I know we have to take care of business and, um, being sober gives me the ability to think with a clear mind, do what needs to be done. Somehow I'm in charge and I kind of like look up, I'm not religious either. Like, whoa, I'm the fuck up. How am I in charge of this? Like, mm -hmm. ah, I can't believe this. Um, but it's just given me, things don't stress me out like most mm -hmm. normies. Um, yeah. I think like you think, you know, you realize like the, what's important in life. That's it. Yeah. Don't and sweat the small stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't sweat the small stuff. I mean, whenever I talk to my sponsor and I complain about my day and she's like, these are quality problems to have. Yeah. Like remember when your biggest problem was like, you couldn't get up in the morning without having a drink. Yep. And I'd be like, yeah, that's so true. I couldn't take a shower because my skin hurt so badly from withdrawal from Oxycontin and it hurt. And I remember calling my sponsor and saying, I can't take a shower. It hurts too much. And yeah. she said, you know, it's going to be okay. And so to be able to be where we all are today is, um, it's a miracle. Yeah. We yeah. do this thing every time we have a meal called high low, where you, um, say like the best parts of your day on the worst parts of your day. And the best days are when the bad parts are like, I had a headache. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to put everything in perspective, we always do that when we're together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gratitude lists. Yeah. I do yeah. that a lot. Yep. Me yeah. Too. That was definitely like a big thing that helped me get sober the second time around because I was so angry, you know, and I think it was so the, the relapse was hard for me because I knew what life was like on the, in a way it was harder to get sober the second time because yes. like I knew what life was like on the other side. I knew it was so much better. I mm -hmm. knew how much happier I was. I had built a business and all of these things. Um, before I got sober the first time I didn't, you know, I thought a life of sobriety would be so boring and I would, how could I ever like travel to Italy? I couldn't like drink the wine. Like, you know, how could I ever have a birthday? How could yeah. I get married without champagne? 
all of these things. And the second time, like I knew how much better sobriety was, but I like couldn't get there. I kept yeah. slipping. I'd get like a few months and then I'd, I'd relapse. And I was just like, why can't you get there? You know, it's better there. Yeah. And it was really hard. And the gratitude list really helped me. And I really do believe like, cause I also love, you know, kind of looking at the science of the brain yes. when you kind of create these new pathways in your brain by instead of looking at the negatives in life, looking at the positives in life, you can actually start to, because there's so much neuroplasticity, you can start to change the way that you think literally, but you have to like force yourself to do these exercises. And then yes. now I find that when I'm, when I come to, you know, something that upsets me, like just yesterday, I, I found out some like just very stressful work stuff. And instead of going immediately to the negative, I went to, well, at least... I have this and I have this and yes. I have this. So that was something that I never had before. So I feel I feel grateful that alcoholism forced me to learn these coping tools for life. Yes. I feel like it was it? a gift. Yes. I wish everybody had to have them. Yeah. And as much as we're not supposed to raise our children as little sponsees, my kids have had the benefit and I will hear them use some of our, you know, cliches or nuances and uh, we were talking with my younger child right before we came here and I had said something and she was like, but it's not going to matter in a day or a week, month or a year. And there's nothing I can do about it because I taught them about powerlessness mm -hmm. and can you affect this, you know, change in this. And if you can't, got to accept it. And to hear that back from them is like, okay, kudos mom. Cause Especially we her because she's 16. Yeah. 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 She's really got a, a grasp on a lot of the coping mechanisms as it, as have you. And so it's been kind of cool to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see that like you get like emotional when your mom tells your story, like, are you proud of her? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so proud of her. And I don't remember anything negative about her growing up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. she taught, you've told me that you've always been worried that I would only focus on those things from before you got sober. And I don't even know what she's talking about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because oh, and it's those things. I know you know what I mean. Those things that you've done and that you're like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. ah, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. And that she doesn't remember them. And it's not that she's blocked them out. They just weren't as impactful to her mm -hmm. as they felt to me in hindsight. So yeah, 